First and foremost, you should know that I'm going to love your child unconditionally. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to discipline them if they need it, but I can assure you that these consequences are always given with love and understanding. Basically, anything they might do that warrants a consequence gets a five-minute detention with me at the beginning of lunch. So let's get down to it. What are you going to need to know? This entire class is online at mrcrowder.us. The calendar page is going to be your go-to resource to find out what's coming up at least a week ahead. Look in the archive section below the calendar to find out what the assignments are and the upcoming tests. Also past quizzes, homework assignments, exemplars of everything you're going to be doing all year. Also the online textbook. Yes, we have a science fair project. But before you freak out and think, oh no, I thought that these were over with the end of elementary school. I just can't bear another one. You should know that this is not a traditional science fair. They present the projects in class. It's not a night standing around and waiting for somebody to confirm your kid's hard work and then waiting some more. You don't get a giant packet this thick. My requirements are simple and there's only one page of info. These are only worth about three of our labs, not hundreds of points. We have four weeks of homework assignments that lead up to the due date. And if your child is keeping up with their homework, then by the due date, they're done with the project. Speaking of which, here's something you're going to want to add to your calendars. The science projects are due October 28th. Now, I've been in this game a long time, and I know that if I just give one final due date, then half are going to wait till the last minute and miss the due date. So I got smart a few years ago and now I give two due dates. For the last minuteers, November 4th is the absolute last turn-in date. That gives you more than a week if you need it. I recommend that your child does this project alone without a partner because one usually does most of the work and the other one gets the same credit because they're lucky to be associated with your awesome kid. But I do believe this is a great opportunity for the parents to get involved. So if you enjoy actually learning and developing with your child and not working for them, then I say go for it. So starting on October 28th, this classroom becomes a giant fire hazard with project boards all over the place, going from the tables to the very top of the cabinets and all over the desk and all over the floor. The projects are graded during presentations and the kids learn tons of things from each other during this time. And truly, this is my favorite week every year. Our lab conclusions have four parts. Purpose and hypothesis, background information, three important observations, is the hypothesis correct or not, explain why the lab results came out this way, and include at least three pieces of data. And then the fourth one is errors in similar labs. This format is going to be burned into every LMS student's brain by 8th grade. We start with this format in 6th grade, and it's the same in 7th, and also the same in 8th grade. That's because our science team takes pride in our consistency here at LMS. We hear back from the high school teachers each year that our kids are always well trained, and that they don't need to be reminded or taught how to write conclusions. I made a video on how to do these conclusions and you're welcome to check that video out. Your child's going to get a quiz roughly once every week. They will have two semester finals, one just before winter break and the other one at the last week of school. These are really large and they get an extra study day to prepare for these. Every test is seen three times, once to help prepare, and then the test is taken the next day with changes in the wording. But the concepts are always the same. And then the third time is when I return the test. All answers are reviewed. So I don't just throw the test back down with a grade on it and then move on with the kids wondering, what did I do wrong? I guess I'll never learn that. I actually want them to know this stuff. My tests are always conceptual tests where the students have to write out full answers with evidence. They often have to draw and label things. If there's anything that they learn in this class, it's how to study. I'm training them to be a good student. In fact, one of my favorite phrases I use all the time is, a good student would, 
A short research or experiment homework assignment is given once every week, always on Monday, and then it's due every Wednesday. Students first share with each other before they turn them in, so they learn from each other after thinking on their own. The only weeks that we don't have homework is when a Monday isn't a school day or during park or CMAS testing, or semester finals weeks. That's three times. When it comes to homework, I think that consistency is the key. Also, it needs to be short and meaningful. These are never busy work assignments, and they often lead into the concept of that week, where it comes up soon on next week's curriculum. And the homework question usually shows up on quizzes. Big hint. Grades are based on the work only. Practice and preparation, and I call that PP, is 20%. That's usually homework. Formative is 40%, and that's usually classwork that takes more than a day to finish. Summative is 40%, and those are quizzes and tests. Anything except tests and quizzes can be made up for full credit at any time during the semester. No credits taken off for late work. However, procrastinating is detrimental. Once you get behind, then you have to make that assignment up while the class is now working on the next one. Then, of course, you're in danger of getting behinder and behinder. And then you may end up giving up because now the pile is so big. So why would I count off for work that you labored to make up given that you made it harder for yourself? You don't need me to create double jeopardy. I work for you and not the other way around. Just communicate and email is the best way to get hold of me. All right. Now let's have a fabulous year at LMS.